Deshaun, take back with you uh, one more, one more again, one more time. I guess that's the best way to kind of put it now at this point uh, as I'm trying to get a couple things kind of squared away here. There we go. Things are much better. Get some better volume going on there. There we go. Perfect. Episode number 97 of Tate's Take, what you're watching right now. Um, find it anywhere you find your favorite podcast. Uh, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Red Circle, Spotify, Stitcher. Also, make sure that you can ca- uh, make sure that you know that you can also catch us on Spreaker, as well as on the Flow Television. That is also on Roku, uh, as well as on Apple TV, Fire TV. So we're we're kind of uh, adding some different elements, if you will, to. Uh, to take to take the podcast, so be sure to tell your mama, tell your grandmama, tell your baby mama where they can find the best, the most entertaining, the most informational, and of course, the most educational basketball content on the planet in the form of a podcast. And uh, got some really awesome NBA stuff that we're going to talk today. Pick the brains of one of my um, one of my friends uh, that I've been looking forward to having come back on for us one more time, one more again. Uh, to thankfully and gratefully uh, that uh, gracefully joining us um, and uh, talking a little bit about we're going to talk some some JJ Redick recently just retired uh, from the NBA after 15 seasons. Of course, we have to mention the Ben Simmons drama as if there's not anything else to talk about these days. And um, throw some pretty interesting questions towards his way that's going to make him think a little bit. So without further ado, let me get ready to bring my dude up in here. Ah, there he is, sitting back there in the green room waiting on me. Um, Basketball writer, analyst, and podcast host from the College Experience Sports Gambling Network. Sports Gambling Podcast Network is what it should say. Find him on Twitter on all social media platforms at the Kobe D. Comedian, too. Don't forget, this dude is a jokester. Uh, Kobe, man, what's up? It's been a little while, dude, but, you know, I tell people all the time, when when football, when we're in the first few weeks of football, we were just talking about this in the green room uh, prior to, uh, you know, we know that we're getting closer to the basketball season uh, when we're in the first few weeks of football. So here it is. Uh, and looking forward to another really awesome basketball season. How you doing, CD? I'm doing great, and I'm looking forward to one that, you know, we're getting fans back, it seems. You know, hopefully we can keep these COVID numbers down. Hopefully life can go on and we can get back to a normal world like it was, you know. Well, actually, I feel like we haven't had a normal world in a while. But doesn't matter. Uh, look, the point is basketball and football back fans back i know we're talking basketball here i know what uh, nba right around the corner college basketball what uh, just i thought i think i saw rothstein tweet out like 46 days or something got me yeah. pumped for both um i i was hitting i was talking pregame uh, or, or backstage that uh you know basketball like the more and more it sneaks up on you more now like i feel like as a it kid does. I could count on, okay, November, I'm going to, st- so I'll die. I, like, I'm going to be diving in. I got my football. I'm going to make that transition mid October, but okay. nowadays it's like, Hey, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the season's coming up. Okay. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. It's happening earlier and earlier, man. And uh, of course with us getting closer to it and near and closer to it. And of course, if we get a little closer to it, I'm going to bring you back on. Have you, Talk to us a little bit. And we know that you like to keep money in people's pockets, too. So we're going to pick your brain on some of that when the season gets here. And maybe even we can try and see if I can get you to uh, throw maybe this weekend's best bet that can maybe put some money in some people's pockets. So be thinking about that as we're going through uh, the duration of this show. First things first, I want to throw this one out there because I know this is um, – one that seems like it's been on everybody's mind and everybody's television as of late as well. The Ben Simmons drama. I want to get your take on some of that and and what in the world do you think is going to happen here? Um, in addition to, you know, is, is, you know, is Ben Simmons out of his mind um, deciding not to, you know, uh, partake in camp and things of that showing up. Um, and maybe even if the asking price for Ben Simmons in that front office for the Philadelphia 76ers appeared to be kind of unrealistic in some cases, what's your take on Ben? I mean, a hundred percent unrealistic, I thought, but, uh, uh, it, dude, it, it, it reminded me of like the Aaron Rodgers situation in a way. Um, mm-hmm. 
And the difference is, is Aaron Rodgers is a lot better to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like yeah. dude, <laughs> Ben Simmons, look, man, I, I got no, I, I got, you know, nothing truly, I, I, truly against you as far as your game and probably who you are as a person. But, well, a little bit with this game. I'll, I'll be honest. But still, like, my point is, is that uh, I think, I think he's going to, I think they're going to trade him, by the way. I know Doc Rivers has said the, uh, that he wants him back. I, I mean, what, what is he, what do you, what, like, in a, what is he supposed to say? If you ask me, you're in a, you're just the head coach. Uh, I don't think what does he have? Does he have a higher ranking than just head coach? I know he might give you like director of player uh, personnel as well too. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I he might. I don't think so, but he might. Well, I'm saying okay. If if I'm just the head coach, you don't want to say anything that is going to because you might have him back. <laughs> you know, in your mind, you're like, well, you know, if I say something horrible about the guy you know, or saying we don't need him, then, well, what happens when he's got to be in the starting lineup and I'm going to look like a fool in the whole city of Philadelphia? Yeah. I'll be a joke. You know what I mean? In, so a, play, in, a, in, a, in a player's league, too, by the way, might I Yeah. <laughs> and, well, that's, and that's really, you know, I compared it to the Aaron Rodgers situation. Uh, the, Aaron Rodgers still hadn't – he didn't really have any power. Yes, I mean, theoretically, he's a big name. But I actually think the Packers might have called his bluff. I'm not 100% on that. Because twenty eight million dollars is still twenty eight million dollars, but um, yes, it is. I, I whereas the NBA, I feel like Ben Simmons is gonna get his wish. You see that with with you know, a lot of uh, athletes where, especially in the NBA, where they actually can kind of dictate. I mean, we what we saw what even Paul George getting to the Clippers. I, I don't know how that wasn't tampering because they're like, right, oh, right. Yeah, you know, Kawhi Leonard just hits him up, and it's like, yeah, come play for the Clippers. And it's like, guys, I need to be traded. It sounds completely like tampering 100 percent but but one, sure enough no he ends up on, on the team that he wants so the question is where does he go i mean i've heard so much different spec i'll be honest i'll be honest and, I, and i'm not trying to to get us to move on to the next subject it's almost like tmz stuff to me it's so much i've seen it's like the aaron Rodgers thing where it's like just figure this thing out guys get as to if, it as if you know? we, as, as if we needed more tmz in our lives almost <laughs> right right but like where do you think i mean what they i've heard speculation what the calves is that the recent one now i feel like i don't even know the recent one anymore i feel like i'm almost like what day is it today you know which which team is it today you know are we gonna put him on a team full of all the light-skinned guys you know with golden <laughs> state he's gonna add a number to those guys or you know, are we, is the Portland thing done? Is it dead? Are we still talking about, you know, a CJ or are we talking about Dame Dalla or, you know, I mean, it, it just seems like it's a new thing. The Sacramento Kings, who, who, who wants to go there of all <laughs> places? So it's just, it's one of those things, man. I'm just so confused about it, but you tell me what you think about this. Cause I, I had some time to kind of think this thing over for a little bit, especially during the time that he said, you know, officially he, he doesn't want to return. He doesn't want to be a part of all this or anything. It already starting to look like a cancerous situation with him as a player al already uh, with that franchise. And you already know how, you know, that the, uh, how strongly opinionated and, uh, boisterous, I guess, that that fan base can be in Philadelphia with their with their teams. Um, but I think that this ultimately hurts Ben Simmons on, in the end, and I'll tell you why. Like, the asking price is already too much. You know, I think that they were so unrealistic that this thing could have been done a long time ago. Maybe you could have food somebody or chick somebody into somebody without asking for as much as you did. At one point, they were asking for, like, a superstar, an all-star, some picks, some money, some some food stamps, some groceries. Like, they were all over the place. But I'll tell you why I think that this was just such a bad idea, specifically on Ben Simmons, because of the simple fact that you sit back and you hold out. Maybe you're still on this roster, but you're saying, I'm not going to play. I'm going to sit down. So assuming that within the next 365 days or so, you will be on a new team, you will be in a new city, you will be on a new roster with new teammates. And if you don't come to work and produce at least bare minimum of what you did the last time we saw you, which was last year, again, remind you, already a bad taste in people's mouths, already as it is, not shoot, choosing not to shoot in a shooter's era and league, 
not able to hit free throws, and not even doing what one of the things you do best, which is penetration and dunking the basketball over a guy that's a whole foot shorter than you. You have to at least be the guy that we saw you last, and you missed a whole year. So if you're not at least that or better, you are hurting yourself long term after that fact, after that matter, of maybe getting a bigger contractor, earning yourself more money, plus you look like a cancer. I just don't think it's smart. I know that that's a long way around the world just to come back around full circle uh, to tell you how much I just don't think it's smart. And he just doesn't appear, again, appear to be the most likable guy already to fans, to maybe teammates, to other players around the league. I'm starting to sense a little bit of entitlement. What do you think about that, Kobe, before we move on to the next um, subject matter? I mean, I 100% buy into everything you just said because you know he uh i just wonder like to me like this isn't gonna work maybe he's demanding that trade knowing that the city of the city of philadelphia dude i I have a lot of friends in the philadelphia that grew up in the philadelphia area they don't like him they don't want him there and to me like that is part of you've already drawn this line that's why I think there's no way he's actually going to play for them. I, I don't know that, like, with Aaron Rodgers, that thing was still, like, split. Like, I feel like a lot no of doubt. Packer fans were like, yeah, we don't really like the way he's acting. But we kind of love that Super Bowl. We, he won us, you know, uh, what, eight or nine mm-hmm. years ago or something. Well, Correct. Simmons he's doesn't have that. something. Yeah, Simmons, Simmons doesn't have that to lean back on. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a really toxic scenario. And I, and I also wonder, like you said, the teammate effect. And, and mm-hmm. he just – and I, I, I don't know a hundred percent. Maybe, maybe there's behind closed doors. He's, he's a much better teammate than I think, but the, the perception sure. that he gives us is that it's like, man, this guy, there's gotta be s- s- some drama there that probably maybe we're not seeing. Um, but oh, yeah, overall, I mean, wh- let me ask you this. Where would you place him? If you were drafting the NBA, right? If you're drafting the NBA, uh, say the league folds in a new league once and they just, uh, you know, obviously some crazy stuff that would never happen. But I'm saying, what pick would he be to you as far as, you know, essentially best NBA players? Pretty far back. I mean, like, wh- what range do you think he would be in? Of top NBA, of all the NBA players in the league right now, what can, yes. what, what percentage would I put him at? Um, I don't feel like he could be better than top. Like, I don't feel like he would be better than top 29. I think I'd probably start with him in the 30 range, and that's probably being kind of generous. Yeah, I was um, thinking 40s. I was thinking 40s coming in. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, that's being generous. And that's for a guy who can't shoot the basketball or won't shoot the basketball. And when he does, it looks bad. Yes, I'm talking about free throws included because that's shooting the basketball. Now, I will give him the benefit of the doubt and the credit of being a guy who – uh, can penetrate and he's much bigger than other guys and all these other things and so forth. But I expected for this process to have gone or been a lot further along with shooting amongst other things because the one or two years that he was starting out as a rookie times two or times three or whatever that number is that he wasn't on the floor. What were you doing that whole time? I mean, I hear, you know, he was injured and this and that. Are you injured for the whole 365 times two? I don't even know what that number is. I would have given you the answer, but I'm not that great at math. <laughs> but I would have I, – I, what were you doing that entire time? That had me thinking that you were somewhere in the, in, 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 in the Maldives and, you know, drinking, you know, something with a coconut in it, an umbrella <laughs> and all that type of stuff. It just got me under that impression and, uh, and under that uh, – uh, under uh, under that you know that I got that kind of feeling and that's some of that is just the energy and the vibe that he kind of gives off as a player anything else on uh, Ben Simmons before we move forward yeah well look I had him in like the 40s and, and and I'll let this go and we can move forward but um that well, has he really improved any aspect of his game like you can pull up players and you could say man in that third or fourth year they really upped it to a next level I don't know that he really has, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like what you're saying, like, what has he done? Like you should be, if that's your weakness, I mean, we all watched, uh, you know, COVID hit us and we had to watch the, uh, the seven or 10 part series of the Chicago bulls. I know Jordan right. and Kobe had that, had that crazy mentality, but you saw, like, I think he wins the championship. He even wins the championship. And then, Oh no, no, no. I think it was, they lost to the Pistons. And then the next day, 
the and next the day next, yeah. he's in the gym. Jordan's in the gym. In the weight room. And yeah, yeah, exactly. And you just knew there's no way that this guy's going to fail. If you're watching this, even if you had never seen the or didn't know the outcome, if you're a young kid, you're like, man, with that mentality, you're going to win in life. I really believe that. And, and that the facts are the facts. He hasn't really improved any part of his game. So if I was a Philly fan, I would still have the same problems besides I'm like, well, you're, what are you demanding? Get better, get better. Then, right. then maybe, right. you know, you'd be in a situation. What do you, all this time you're doing this complaining, get in the right. gym and focus on your weaknesses, man. But I don't know. Yeah. That, I think that that's one of my bigger issues too. I was talking to a couple of buddies of mine on the clubhouse uh, app, uh, shout out to my guys over there at the barber shop. And, uh, they were like, if you were redrafting the guys that went one, two, and three, which I think was Simmons, Ingram and Jalen Brown, like what order would you redraft them at? I think it's fair to say I would probably put Simmons third. I think, and I think that's so. <laughs> not really saying a whole lot behind two other guys who, um, you know, just, you know, maybe, you know, have, have been limited time all-stars or maybe just hasn't achieved very much or hasn't had the kind of team or coaches or, you know, uh, a big man in, 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 in Joe Embiid that someone like a Ben Simmons has had. Um, so it's, it, 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 I'd be really curious to see what kind of work ethic that he's going to put forward. And as much as he got killed, listen, if you're going to go take maybe some notes from someone, pick somebody's brain a little bit, Maybe that guy should probably be Paul George because around this time a year ago, I don't think anybody coming out of the playoffs killed Paul George hitting the side of the backboard and everything else as much as they did. Maybe you want to talk to him about how you could revamp all over again and come out with a chip on your shoulder and actually play well. That's just kind of my take on that. Here's the other piece of it. J.J. Redick, and I, I, I'm very curious to see where you stand with some of this. This is a guy that was drafted. 2006, number 11 in the first round, played for at least a good handful of teams and clearly is not the same player that he was in college. But I'm always going to be this person to say this, and this is one of the reasons. Not only am I curious to know what you have uh, think about J.J. Redick and his uh, career as an NBA player in those 15 years just in general or painting with a really broad brush here, but outside of that, where does he rank, especially what you saw from him on the collegiate level? Where does he rank amongst best shooters? Maybe not pure scorers, but best shooters that you've ever seen because he's certainly up there. I know everybody's going to throw out the word, the name Steph Curry. That's definitely in the conversation for sure, somewhere near the top. But there's just something about J.J. Redick. I know he was coming off a ton of curls and screens, but you could be as close in his face, darn near looking like you're about to kiss the dude. And he finds a way to have that quick release and, and, and that jump shot. You might as well just start running the other direction. That ball is going in the basket. They call him JJ a pretty a, – it sounds pretty pretty on, on on the spot to have a name like that with the way that he shoots the ball. What is your overall take on JJ Redick in his 15-year career? And where is he amongst the best shooters that you've ever seen on the college level, especially the, considering the fact, obviously, we have to mention, a dookie? <laughs> yeah i mean look i i have an older brother that is a diehard duke fan so i i actually despise him every day of god my life. god bless yeah. god god bless god bless you kobe Dan. <laughs> so i mean from a young age i have hated the duke blue devils man i i uh and and jj reddick though i i will sit there and and, and praise him all day because and i i he was on the clippers for a while i live in los angeles and i i have for i had like a I was gifted through someone that just didn't like basketball, like a 20 game package every year going to the games. And I always had, I think I had, every time I went or 80% of the time would have that moment where I'm with someone because I had multiple tickets and I just say, damn, he's exceeded every expectation I would have ever thought. You know what I mean? And that's really the reality. Cause I, I feel like we saw other style players like that uh, at mm -hmm. Duke where, you know, I, I thought Trajan Langdon was an amazing, uh, amazing shooter. Yes. And I, 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 I yes. thought like we saw him the kind assassin. of fizzle. The Alaskan. Yes. Assassin. And he phased out kind of fast in the NBA. And that, I know it's a different game, but Reddick's been 15 years. So it's like, I kind of foresaw like a similar career when I, when he was coming out, I thought, ah, you know, he'll be on an NBA roster for, you know, three, four, maybe five years. 
if he's lucky, mm-hmm. maybe a Steve Kerr career, you know? And, and then mm-hmm. I, I got to give it to him. And, and you know what I think it is? Maybe it was in my hate for Duke. I, I think he's a much better athlete than I actually gave him credit for initially. And then, cause he was a, a sneaky good defender too. Like yeah. where I think yeah. I just penciled him in with like, you know, the, the traditional white boy that they have that, that, that's, yeah. that just, you're like, Typical okay, well, Duke. Yeah, yeah, like I was like, well, you know, they'll play all right defense, but we know like Wojo shouldn't be, really be guarding this guy. You know, like you'd have the <laughs> moments like that. Well, actually, Reddick was the real deal. He was a good, he was a good defender, man, and 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 yeah, he, t- he, ex- he exceeded my expectations greatly, greatly mm-hmm. of of how how good I thought he would be in the NBA. Um, as far as best shooters, man, I, it's it's so tough because if it's if you're talking NBA, I mean, obviously you got the Steph Curry and, and on the, Dell. On the college, yeah. on, on the co- let's just go college level only. From what you have actually seen with your two eyes in your, I don't want to put your business out there. Let's just say age X. Let's say that for for that amount of time, he's got to be somewhere near the top. I would imagine. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, and and he he was ruthless, especially in college. I mean, uh, in college, like. I, I can remember countless games, but specifically one where I thought Maryland had him beat. And he, he mm. ends up hitting like two, uh, two threes from like pretty, pretty like deep out Dan Marley range yeah. Um, yeah, where, yeah. where you're just sitting there like, damn this guy. But I, I, as far as shooting goes, yeah, I think you got to put him on, you know, with the best shooters uh, in, in college basketball history. I, Cause I, I would say this, if I had to rank even Duke's shooters, I think he's got to be the clear cut number one. Right. I think so. I, I I mean, like you said, Trajan Langdon. That's a that's a that that's a really tight and close call for those who can go back. I might be dating myself a little bit, aging a little bit myself, just a tad bit. But I mean, even when you start talking about as much hate, like 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 after Christian Leitner, sure, where there's so there were some guys. It's like we 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 still hate Duke, but nobody brought that hate back. I feel like the way that JJ did, he embraced it. I think at one point in time in Chapel Hill, the whole like student section or somebody got a hold of his phone number and they're like blowing him up and sending him all kind of pictures. I think he got death threats at one point in time. I, I bet. Don't put that on him. Yeah. But I feel like he got like death threats at one point in time and he just had that jump shot, man. That was just smooth. And, and, and on top of that, yeah, maybe McDonald's All American or whatever, what have you. But he wasn't that household name coming out to where it was like, watch for this guy. I mean, he was he was he was damn good, but he wasn't like that guy. And then I'm watching him and I'm like, OK, he's in some pretty tough shots. This dude could be pretty good. I think I'm going to throw his name out there uh, next time I'm talking to a couple people. I'll probably surprise him. And the next thing you know, the next game and the next game and the next game, it just seems like he's not missing at all. And it's like, when is this dude going to miss? And then before you know it, it's like, I think this dude's like the real deal for real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. From that standpoint, and I, I just, you know, especially, I, th- I think he also, in my personal and humble opinion, was when we start getting to a point where it's like, you can always use shooters in this league. I think that he was one of the biggest reasons behind why people started saying that and why that still exists to this day. Because you can, if, if a guy can't do anything else, he can shoot. You want to go and get him because it, it, it adds such a benefit uh, uh, to your team. Closing remarks on uh, JJ Reddit uh, with my dude Kobe Dan. Yeah, I'll just say, man, uh, you, you make a great point, and I actually think he didn't need to retire. I I, I thought he could ca- could still carry on. I mean, I get it; it's a grind, eighty-two games. Uh, you know, and, and if your team makes the playoffs more, but it's, I just still think the money is good, and I think he's still playing at a decent enough level. I understand injuries and stuff, and just a natural aging. Maybe you just. And maybe he's he's good. I think he's got a podcast that's somewhat successful. So, you know, yeah. he's got a, he's got opportunities. I'm sure uh, elsewhere too. Uh, seems like a smart guy. So, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, just it exceeded my expectations when it, when I really look back on the career. And uh, in college, he was a killer, in my opinion. Like he was a guy that would, like I told you with the Maryland games. I think I remember a couple other ones where he he had that killer mentality of like, this is a guy you t- please don't give him the ball with the final 30 seconds. Can we please double him, double him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. don't, Triple don't let him. him yeah. Him. Yeah. Don't let him get, Quadruple don't let him. Him. <laughs> uh, trust me as, as a guy that like, I was still at the, the kid age then where like you had to spend time with your brother. So he'd be watching these things. You're just like, Oh, please, please 
guard him, Wake Forest. Yeah. Guard him. You know, right. like uh, <laughs> so. So uh, no, but he he exceeded my expectations, and uh, uh, he should be. I, I would have lost. I'll put it like this: as a gambling man, which I am. I'm lucky there was no props back when he was drafted because I would have lost a lot of I, w- I would have lost a lot of money because I totally thought uh, that I that I had him pegged for you know three or four NBA three or four year NBA career and if he's lucky five six and and just a, a somewhat of a factor but not really of a factor bench player that would hit the open three no this guy was much 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 better made me look like a fool so so kudos to JJ Redick and best wishes on the retirement. A little bit surprised that we never saw him win a national championship out of those really good Duke teams and teams that went to Final Fours and won national championships. Coach K has five. A little surprised that he doesn't make that list. And if I'm not mistaken, which I could be totally off base with, I think he made the playoffs every single year of his career. In fact, I think the one year that he didn't make the playoffs was last was last year, I think feel like somewhere right up in that range. I remember them talking about he and uh, um, he and Zion, or maybe it was a year before last, had a, a high expectations for Zion because he doesn't want to be known as the guy that made it so that uh, J.J. Reddick didn't go to the playoffs for one year or two years, whatever, what have you. But good for uh, J.J. Reddick on his retirement. Congratulations, an outstanding career, and saying that he's retiring because he wants to spend a little bit more time with his family. That all makes sense. He was talking about being a gambling man, and that would be nobody other than my dude, Kobe Dent, basketball writer, analyst, podcast host from the College Experience Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Catch him on social media at the Kobe D at the Kobe D. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this, uh, Kobe, but I do want to get some of your takeaways from something that we just saw within the past week, two weeks, somewhere in that range. What stands out? What names stand out? Or what you, how about this? What you will remember the most about this group of guys uh, with these, uh, with, with, with this class uh, that made the uh, the Basketball Hall of Fame, Chris Webber, Chris Bosh, Bill Russell as a coach, um, being highlighted for that, which being the very first African-American head coach in the NBA, that's very important. Uh, Paul the Truth Pierce, uh, Jay Wright, who has uh, what, two national championships now, one of the very few amongst active coaches that could say that, and my dude, yes, Fear of the Fro, Big Ben Wallace. Um, what stands out to you about this group of guys or this particular class before we move forward? I would probably, and you're a Pistons fan, so you're probably going to hate my opinion here. So I apologize in advance. Um, uh, I, look, Ben Wallace was on the bullets and the, I believe the Orlando magic before he went to the Detroit Pistons. I was the biggest fan. The Bullets signed him. I was, you know, I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. They signed him on like a couple 10-day contracts, and I, I believe, if memory serves me correct, and he was, he was, he was playing tough ball. We, and, and, you know, I really got to see a little bit of his game develop offensively where I, I know that still sounds crazy, but I actually saw that. Sure. And, and then, uh, but at the end of the day, and I, I'm a big Ben Wallace fan. Not only do I think he seems like a, a, a good human being, but also. Welcome to the party. Yeah, I, I just love his game. I mean, I loved his effort that he would always play with and his athleticism. But I don't think he should be a Hall of Famer. Is that a hot take? I, I, like, I just don't think he should be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> um, we, am I crazy? We were doing so, we were doing so well, Tony. <laughs> we were doing so well. <laughs> Um, I've been arguing this, uh, this is, uh, been a hot topic because I said, dude, I love the guy, but I wouldn't put it. It's like the Spurs when they retire Bruce Bowen's number. I go, look, he was a damn good defender. I just yeah, don't think you should yeah. retire his number. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, Oh, Duncan Robinson. That. Okay. Okay. I'm sold. Eh, anyone else? Or I mean, you got to go to ice, 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 uh, German for me to, uh, to, for, for me to have, find a third guy that I would retire for the Spurs. Um, so the, the I I would probably vote against that one. The other ones, I mean, uh, the, unfortunately, Chris Bosh is one that I always argue with a with a buddy of mine on the podcast because I'm a I am a big Chris Bosh fan as a human being, okay. and I also think he was underrated as a basketball player. But I also think that the Miami Heat thing, although they won championships, I actually think it hurt the way we look at him from a career perspective. Mm-hmm. I when agree. I I agree. Yeah, when I was watching him on the Raptors and. 
my buddy, I don't think, you know, that I had been arguing this point with uh, on my podcast a lot. I don't think he watched them enough on the Raptors when he was, when he was their number, their number one, essentially. I, I really think he was an unbelievably skilled player that unfortunately won't be remembered as, I mean, he's in the hall, so he got in, but I mean, I, I just think this is a guy that was unbelievably talented and athletic. And, and I don't think he will be remembered as the way I, I, I saw the potential. Like he could have had if you, if he stayed with the Raptors or, or gone elsewhere to be a number one, his stat sheet would look, you know, I think just incredible uh, his career wise, but um, everyone else, Chris Weber, you know, I had the, 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 the privilege of watching him. I know you're a Michigan state guy, but uh, Weber was so smooth, man. Just such a, yeah. I, I loved his game. Um, especially the more, the more and more he developed his jumper. I feel like by the time he got to the Sacramento Kings, he was actually decent at hitting that three or like, or let, you know, 20 foot or whatever but um uh jay Wright, i mean i think he's i think he's the real deal i think he's definitely deserving uh, of that spot and i think uh you know i i don't know your take are you traditionally do you do you like villain of a basketball because i always kind of do yeah i mean you know what i'm uh... I'm a guard guy, and they typically run about four guards out there anyways. Uh, so I'm okay with it. I love their style of play. And one of the things that I think I respect about Villanova basketball the most is that in the time that I can think of, if my memory serves correctly, is that they don't win with one and done. You know, I think Tim Thomas might have been the only one. Everybody else is upperclassmen. Now, of course, most people are going to say, oh, well, you would say that, Deshaun. I mean, you like Michigan State and Tom Izzo, and that system doesn't produce one and done. So why wouldn't you like Villanova and Jay Wright? No, but it just makes sense. And, I mean, they were in the stinker for a little – maybe not the stinker. I mean, they, they were a respectable program. But, you know, they're always been one of those programs to me that I think are respectable – uh, and, and, and got really close, had really good teams to win championships, but never got it done. But you could see them inching closer and closer. Like one year, like I think three straight years, they go to the lead eight or something like that, you know, but they can never quite get to the point. Then the year that they go to the final four, they don't win the national championship. However, fast forward to years later. And then of course, you know, outside of the 85, they win two out of three years in 16 and 18. So uh, I definitely take my cap off to them. And you're talking about Chris Bosch. I mean, I had the privilege and honor opportunity to interview him for an extensive amount of time, actually, and had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and seems like a great guy. Every time I see him, yeah, seems like a great great guy. guy. Yeah. Great guy. Great, great guy. And let me ask you this before we get ready to move forward, because I do want to go move on to our next topic. Do you see the Evan Mobley comparisons to Chris Bosh or the Chris Bosh comparisons with, with, with Evan Mobley the way a lot of I, – I personally see them. That's just me, but I want to get your take a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. I think I've, I think I, I, you know, I've seen some people make that connection before. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but uh, I can see that some, especially like um, – Bosch is one where uh, was he one and done at Georgia Tech or was he two years? Yes, he was one and done. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. In so, a great class, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, but I will say, like, like he was one to me also that uh, kind of in JJ Reddick's style. I I thought he was going to be a player. I just wasn't sh- really sure how it would fit in, what his game would be like. I kind of thought, you know. Could he be I, – I didn't know if he wanted to get that physical, you know, because the NBA, you know, I know it's not as physical as it once was, but Bosch was – was he could get in there, especially in Toronto. Like I said, when you go through and look at his stats and, and go back and watch some of that, that you know, those performances in, in Toronto, you'll see that, like, the guy – he he got – he basically was, was more physical than I thought he was going to be because that was my one skepticism at Georgia Tech. I was like, I don't know how he'll transition – well, I mean, I, I, I still would have drafted him really high. Don't get me wrong. I, mean, I don't want to sound like a maniac here. But I, I thought maybe that would be his weakness, whereas he kind of answered the call to me, in, in my opinion, on all those things. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, big fan, big fan. That's awesome you got to interview him, man. Uh, and as far as, as Paul Pierce, you know, I know everyone gives him a hard time because of this past yeah, year. Yeah, I'm one, I'm, I'm one of those that give him a hard I'm just <laughs> not really – I'll be honest. I'm just not the Paul Pierce guy. I res- I know he's a little, you mm. know, slower than most guys or uh, uh, in terms of speed. Um, 
and uh, and 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 just uh, a little bit more finesse type game, not really as athletic and things like that. So I'll always respect what he's done on the basketball court um, and off of the basketball court, for that matter. Some of the things he says, mm, I can kind of do without. Um, but in all fairness, you know, we're talking about what he's done on the basketball court, and he's he's done. I mean, we're talking about a span or a time when. The Celtics were just really – didn't really have a lot outside of Paul Pierce. A lot of other guys were coming and going, but Paul Pierce was still there sticking around and staying. Eventually ended up winning him one, obviously. But um, I will always give him credit because he, he he did work really hard on the basketball court. And for that to be during a time where the NBA was transitioning to being more about can you run, yes, check. Can you jump, yes, check. Okay, come on, you can play in this league, you know, as an athlete. And with Paul Pierce not being exactly that and never really diminished, I always uh, have a have a, a level of respect for him in those regards. Yeah, he was he was like sneaky crafty. I thought sneaky crafty to get like the, mm-hmm. the maximum out of his game, and you could tell that like we were talking Ben Simmons before. To me, it was the opposite. He would I think he would work on his weaknesses. I really believe that, and and. Uh, and in general, I thought he was a, just uh, overall had a. I thought he had a good basketball IQ. I thought the way he played the game mm-hmm. uh, seemed very like he, I. I thought he was a decent passer. I thought you know gr- gr- could take a charge. You know what I mean? Sure. Like I, sure. I thought he was a, a just a smart mind on the basketball court. So uh, yeah, I mean I, I think he was deserving. So uh, and then uh, obviously the the Bill Russell thing. I mean, Bill Russell, not only was a, as a guy that has, what, like a thousand championships. Um, Correct. Obviously, to break that barrier, it doesn't get, you know, guys, I mean, we know the history of the world. So, to me, I couldn't imagine. I often talk about it with Jackie Robinson. People always, you know, will, will say, you know, how great of a player he is. And I go, well, think about think about how the, the, the umpire, more than any sport, the judgment in, in, in – uh, Baseball is, is such a big factor with strikes and, and stuff. You know, is that a ball? Is that a strike? Well, you know, think about what his batting average really would be, is my point. Is like, you know, you mm-hmm. know there was racism back then. We all know how bad no it was back then. So, of course, no he was probably getting balls and strike or way more balls, you know, or I'm sorry, way more strikes, not strikes balls. Them. But, mm-hmm. the, but you know, and I, and I just think that that barrier – you know, uh, it's, it's, it's huge, man. And, uh, I couldn't imagine being the first of definitely Bill Russell on many levels. The guy's a legend. So, uh, yeah, I'm okay with yeah. that. Everyone is a big Ben, man. If I had to, if I was voting clearly, <laughs> and clearly. I love big I'll, Ben, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm a, you know what? My mama raised me to say, if you don't have anything good to say, finish it off, Kobe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't, don't say nothing anything, at all. Yeah. Don't say nothing at all. So we're going to let Kobe <laughs> breathe a little bit. And with that, uh, <laughs> I want to get into what a lot of people know, and I'm sure you're very familiar with this already because you've been here joining us before, Kobe. Uh, our quick release segment. Of course, you got to use this time to pay some bills. Sponsored and powered by Exotics by Curtis Smith. Look good, feel good, play great. Exotics products dot com give your skin finally what it deserves what it needs the whole nine um all 110 percent naturals uh, natural um products no chemicals added exoticsproducts.com go to the discount code listen i know it's getting to that point it's like how dare i be like you know uh, 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 uh promoting exotics about all these different you know shaving products amongst other things i'm out here looking like teen wolf Go to exoticsproducts.com, and and once you get to the checkout, all very inexpensive products. They work fantastic. I've been living by them religiously daily uh, for that matter. Probably can't tell, but I really have. Uh, Once you get to that checkout, hit the discount code TATESTAKE. You see it there at the bottom on the ticker for your 15% off. Now, with that, I'm going to throw a couple questions out here to you, Kobe, uh, before we get ready to wrap up. My first one um, let's go with this one. Rookie or rookies that you're most excited to see this upcoming season? I'm going to say it for one more time and give you a little bit of chance to think about it. Rookie or rookies, maybe mm, anywhere between one to three rookie or rookies that you're most excited to see this upcoming season in the NBA. 
I think I got to go chalky here, man. I think I got to go like, you know, the obvious thing I, what the Orlando magic did and, and getting Jalen Suggs and then uh, right. Wagner. Um, I, I think those are, that's probably what I'm most excited to see. You know, I've read a bunch of public, you, you never know. I mean, I, it, it, NBA, I feel like you somewhat do, but um, Orlando magic are going to be a team to watch. I think they could be sneaky. Good. Uh, sure, well, I don't know. Sure, I know sure. that's. It seems like a trendy play, though. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Listen, I mean, I was with you on the Jalen Suggs thing just because of the fact that you know he's a winner on all levels. He's physical, and I think that he's he's ready for this jump and for this league and gonna make a bigger impact than some people would anticipate. You just got to get on my bad side, bringing up Franz Wagner and just these Michigan guys. I don't know what it is. Dude. I don't know what kind of game plan you walked in here with today, Kobe. Uh, but it, it's it, it it might be working. I'll never expose my weaknesses, but it might be working. Well, um, I'll be honest though. Ahead. Like the the Wagner thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to to, to cut you off there. Like the Wagner thing. It's not necessarily his game that I'm like. Oh, this is must 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 watch TV. But it's the fact. That I think, from what I've been reading, like it seems to be the trendy pick that the Magic are going to be good. And I, and I think I buy into it a little bit when I break down the stuff. And and Jalen Suggs, yes, to me he is must watch TV. Like I, I that's one that I definitely, uh, I love the way he played at Gonzaga in, in his one year there. And I think, uh, you know, I think he can be really, really good. And I, I, I like his game a lot. So I, I'm very excited to watch him. So I just kind of paired them because they were both top ten picks. You know what I mean? So I'm going to try to get dig myself out of that hole a little bit. <laughs> All good. No worries. Uh, I won't let you borrow my shovel if that's what you're trying to do here. Uh, in terms of rookies, okay, name a player that might surprise every – Who? and this is, of course, fill in the blank. This player, this rookie might surprise everyone else on the next level in the NBA, but not me. I'll say it one more time. Fill in the blank. Blank player might surprise – talking about rookies – Bank, blank player might surprise everyone else on the next level, but not me. Who's going to be just that damn good, Kobe? Hmm, that's a, that's a great question because I feel like I had a few that uh, I well, on, on on draft night that I was sitting there saying, you know, especially the second round always kind of surprises me in the in, in the uh, yeah. the NBA draft. First round, you know, we pretty much have this thing pegged out at least like fifteen picks in, uh, yeah. but th there's a few that I think. I, I wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I, I was uh, I was kind of shocked on on a few draft picks. I will say, like I was surprised Kispert went. I thought Kispert should have dropped some, but that was just me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as far as surprising, I don't know. I would say like I'm interested to see. I think I think Quentin Grimes could have a better career than what I'm what mm -hmm. what some people think. I think uh, Trey Mann's another one that I think could be sneaky good. Um. Obviously, I'm very intrigued to see the Jalen Johnson thing, like to see, you know, obviously with the COVID situation and what went on in Duke, I'm very interested to see, uh, you know, how, how that shakes out because uh, we didn't get a big enough, to, to tell you the truth, I feel like I didn't no, get a big didn't. enough sample size to know. Well, what's, what's so funny about that is uh, they pick him up at 20, they pick up Sharif Cooper at number 48, two guys that didn't even play the whole season, but during the time that they did, looked pretty good. I think Sharif Cooper looked a little bit better, of course, with the exception of some bad, not so great shooting, of course, efficiency, things like that. And of course, maybe some turnovers here. They're a little bit too turnover prone, but even we saw flashes of what Jalen Johnson could do, maybe depending on what your expectations were of Jalen Johnson coming out of high school and coming into Duke. Uh, but anytime that you get a guy who's ranked in the top three or top five, um, coming into college from high school uh, and ends up falling to your number 20 in the draft, regardless of how big or small that sample size is, I would imagine would be a good thing. So just kind of getting a little bit of your take on the combination of Sharif Cooper and uh, and Jalen Johnson with the Hawks coming up. How do they fit? Because I, I, I told people all the time, I said, listen, between in the event that uh, Trey Young uh, uh, in the event that Sharif Cooper is the is, is the primary backup to, to Trey Young this upcoming year, I can't think of a – let me think of the word, the one-two punch, the starting point guard, ben, uh, uh, um, backup point guard. I can't think of a craftier point guard duo between starter and backup point 
than those two guys. Just your quick take on that, on those Hawks real quick. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is going to be able to work. I, I'm intrigued to see it. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see it. And just in general, they're an interesting team. I, I'm curious, like, just in general, how, uh, you know, with such – having the success that they had last year, can they can they duplicate? Can they bring that mm-hmm. back? Uh, you know, I think that's going to be the, the main factor there. But I, I actually think it could work out. Uh, obviously, I think they'll be probably be through, the, through October, November – we might be skeptics at, at times, <laughs> but I think in uh, in in the long run, I think yeah, I I just think the Hawks in general are a team that uh, should be excited to watch every every time you turn on the TV. Yeah, they're not gonna surprise anybody this time around, that's for sure. And it feels like my dude Derek Crush boy, appreciate you for joining us on Facebook, has been living in my head rent free. Uh, talking about guys having a serious impact like Cam Thomas, who can absolutely fill it up, and I don't think that. Team oh, how did I forget him? Beat. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that that I don't think that team is gonna miss a beat from a scoring perspective with the Brooklyn Nets when they decide to put him in the game. So that's a little bit of a uh, free space on the Tate's Take Bingo card, is what I like to call it. Let's go over to this one. I need two teams from you, Kobe Dan, one out of each conference that you believe can make a surprising run, if any, um, similar to the Hawks. So like the year before last, I think Denver got all the way to the uh, conference finals. Nobody really expected that to happen from some, you know, really awesome play from Jamal Murray. Then the Hawks did it last year, surprising some people. If there's one team out of the East and one team out of the West, who makes a similar run like that? I'll give you mine on the back end. Uh, you know, I mean, unless you want me to go first. No, 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 no. I'm going to go with the, I'm going to, I'm going to take a long shot on the Knicks. <laughs> okay. I, I I look. I grew up a Knicks fan, so maybe that had, maybe it had something to do with it. But uh, you know, what do you think of that Kemba Walker addition? Well, I, I'm curious yeah, your I'm take not, on, on on if that could I'm, work out in New York. I think that it can. This might be one of his last stops. I'm not sure that that'll really surprise very many people. I don't wish that upon him. Uh, but when you're going back home, it's a different element. Maybe that that's what he needs because listen, when he spent that time. <clears throat> excuse me, in Charlotte uh, and, and, and in Boston, more so in Boston, uh, it just really didn't, there was just so much, you know, just outside of injury prone and just inconsistencies uh, and things like that. And where I thought he would step up in the FIBAs and things like that, I didn't really quite see that uh, with him and in his game either. So uh, I'm, I'm curious. And I think that it should work out pretty good. The more interesting thing and probably key to me for uh, this New York Knicks team is, listen, I mean, Obi Toppin's getting better. Uh, you have the uh, the kid from uh, Kentucky, can't think of the name right now, the point guard from Kentucky who came out and played extremely well in his rookie year. Oh, uh, uh, but I th- uh, oh my God, I know it. Um, I see, you could probably see my wheels spinning. I feel like it starts with Emmanuel quickly. Yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> but on, on that on that back end, I think a lot is really going to rely upon a guy who I probably like more than anybody else on this Knicks team because I like his work ethic, I love his motor, his his rim protection, shot blocking ability, his dunking ability, and, and that's Mitchell Robinson. And we didn't see nearly enough of him down the stretch. And that's just been a guy that I've, 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 I've just loved ever since he was uh, coming out of high school and even going into the pros. But he's got to stay healthy. How, how do you think Grimes will do from Houston? I like I like I like Quentin Grimes. I think it's a perfect situation for him being, you know, a, a combo guard, a guy that can score it. Maybe not at will, but strong uh, from a guard perspective, and even as a point guard, a natural, prototypical. Like he's not, you know, the problem with, and I, I want to educate the people in this a little bit because this is something that concerns me. There's still use for the point guard position in the league and i think a lot of people kind of forget that almost as if like how the center position at one point in time uh you know was extinct until you know maybe you know uh jokic and and uh and and um and and um and joe Embiid brought it back to an extent uh but a lot of people are just not the natural born and bred point guards that we grew up seeing a guy that is a distribute first you know, facilitation first type of point guard. A lot of guys are combo guards now. And the reason I feel like that guys are combo guards now is because they're not pure point guards and they're not elite shooters enough to be considered a shooting guard. So what happens? You got to put them somewhere and you call them a combo guard. I don't like that idea 
of, of that definition. I feel like the idea and the definition of what a combo guard really is, is a guy who can excel at both of those things. That's what a combo guard is. And I think that he's uh, one of the next guys that are in line that is going to show us that he can do a very good job. Maybe not a great job in some people's opinions, but he's got the body for it. He's got the experience. Good thing he stayed an extra year, ended up transferring, coming off the Final Four. Very well coached. When you're coached by Bill Self and uh, and Kelvin Sampson, there's not many better guys out there to, to, to uh, be coached by underneath your career. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this though. What do you? I know you're a Pistons fan. No so doubt. what's what is what is a great year for you this year? Oh geez, um, gosh, they need everything. I'm almost tempted to ask the manager if they have a size medium in the back. <laughs> um, listen, do better than last year. Make it feel better than last year. Compete and listen. Let me tell you something. They competed last year with a lot of really good teams and beat some good teams. Now. This is the thing, you know, I, I, I need you to beat. There's not going to be a ton of times that they're going to be expected to beat another team. So when those times come about, I need you to beat those teams. Those teams that you're on equal playing field or equal <laughs> level or, or, or equal wavelength as, I need you to beat those teams and just compete with the other teams, if not anything else. And we know that, that it's a long season. It's not going to happen every single night. But just make me feel better than you did last year. And while the record looked bad, they, 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 they surprised me in some wins that they came away with. But let me tell you something. When they went bad and they went cold and they didn't do good, they did not do good at all. <laughs> I'd love to show you what that looked like, Kobe, but I don't yeah. think everybody or nor you would appreciate it if I vomited all over this uh, program. So, <laughs> so 26 wins a season ago, right? I think that's what it was. Um, uh, what would be – 30, 30 wins would be a win for you. You there? Say that, say that one more time. Uh, so I just wonder, I think last, last season, 26 wins. What would be like, what's that magic number to show improvement and get you excited for the future? 30. Give me 30. 30? Me 30. So if you go 30 me, and, me, and 42, or no, me, that was last year, yeah. No, I, I mean, not that it don't necessarily make me feel great, but give me a Steph Curry. Give me a 30. I mean, you got to show me that you were better than that. Give me, you know what? Give me 31. Let me 31. Get, let, let me, yeah. 31 me and 51, five. you're taking that? Give me just bare minimum, absolutely. I'm taking all I can get right now. They won 26 last year. If they can win 26 and a half. This year, I'd feel a little bit better. But the expectations go up. You've got a, uh, some really good, you know, you, you, you've got a workhorse in Isaiah, uh, you know, and, and uh, obviously and, um, and um, Syracuse. Um, Jeremy, J Jeremy Grant. I don't know yes. why that took me so long. But Jeremy Grant had a really good season, obviously, played with the Olympics as well. He's got some more experience up under his belt, feeling like a steal. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you got your Cade Cunningham and things like that. I've got to see what the new kid looks like. And I don't even want to say his name, Killian Hayes, uh, because I don't want to jinx myself. But I've got to see you off the IR, and I've got to see some consistency out of him. I know we got to hurry up and get up out of here and run. I just have probably one or two more for you, uh, Kobe. By the way, my answer to this question uh, was um, I'm going to go with – the Memphis Grizzlies out of the West, and I'm going to go with the Chicago Bulls out of the East. I think that's the way that I'm going to go with that one. Um, last question. Um, ah, this is perfect. Fill in the blank with Kobe Dent. Don't be surprised if Ben Simmons landed blank. I'll ask you one more time, give you some time to think about it. Don't be surprised if Ben Simmons landed here. Where is here for Kobe Dan? I mean, I feel like this is this is a tough question because I feel like it changes per at which hour is this? Per um, hour, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. day is the wind blowing today? I, you know what? Give me. I could see the Blazers maybe taking a flyer on him. You, you, okay. you heard that one? Have you heard? I've heard. Yeah, I've heard that one. 
Yeah, I think maybe. But I, I, mean, think, I, I also think I, I also think I've heard all of them. I've even heard G League for crying out loud. <laughs> I've heard I've heard I've heard Church League for crying out loud. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, so give me uh, whatever the odds would be on the Portland Trailblazers. I, I should have pulled those odds up. My, my apologies. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I could see that case. I know what Golden State, their guy is already getting in trouble for tampering, so I don't think that's going to happen. G- give me the Portland Trailblazers. Last but certainly not least before we get you out of here, what is, what is the lock for the weekend or for this week? Uh, we know it's big time football. It could be NFL. It can be college. It could be one of both. Where is the lock? I don't know if it's over under. I don't know if it's pick them straight up uh, a money line. I don't know if it's spread. Where is the lock this week, Kobe Dan? Uh, college football. I mean, I could do this. Uh, we could do. I'll do. I'll give you one college, one NFL here that that I think okay. you'd be wise to bet on. Um, I'm gonna ride with uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks against Texas A&M. It's, I mean, I, I do a thing, a six-pack of locks on my show. Okay. Uh, it, it changes per day almost like we did with the – but the, you get the same six teams, but you, it changes the order. I don't know if it was just because I was hearing about how bad A&M's quarterback's play has been struggling, um, but I, I was like, oh, man, they got, I think they got the wrong team favored in that one, so I am riding with the Razorbacks there. Uh, in On the NFL front, which – I should tout that I have. I've been pretty on fire. I'm 20 and 10 ATS right now, uh, picking oh, wow. the NFL. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take a flyer on the Titans. I had them uh, against Seattle last week, pulling the upset. I'm gonna lay the five points. The Colts are beat up. They're injured. Give me the Titans to handle things uh, at home after their first. You know, Kyler Murray ate them up week one. So week week three, coming back to uh, to the home crowd. After that bad performance week one, you know, so I think they're gonna they're gonna take down the Colts in what is that Nashville? Yeah, yeah. Interestingly enough, my dude Kobe Dan, go ahead and plug away because I need the people to know where they can go, listen, get some of their bills paid, you know, all all, all the good stuff. Uh, let the people know where they can find you at and uh, some of the uh, things that you've got going on over at the uh, sports gambling. Um, uh, sport, sports gambling uh, podcast network yeah ch- and guys i appreciate thank you by the way uh for giving me the platform here but uh uh download the sgpn app uh sgpn you're gonna get uh, i host a college football show a college basketball show i also hop on the M- nfl and nba ones um, but we have all sports covered man uh we you, you not only will you get all of our picks um me and my co-hosts have picked every game actually over the past four years. And we've been over 500 in each sport. Um, that, and also you'll get our guest podcast. We have all different types of guests from Al Harrington to Bill Burr to, uh, to Mike Leach or, or, or uh, Joe Theismann. I don't know. Like uh, we've had a lot of guests on, so you'll get all of that access for free SGPN app. Check us out. I'm at the Colby D on Twitter, but remember, check out sports gambling podcast network and the college football and college basketball experience. Thank you for having me. That's it, man. Oh, absolutely. That's it for episode number 97. My dude, Kobe Dan, basketball writer, analyst, and podcast host from the College Experience Sports Gambling Podcast Network. At the Kobe D, you heard the man do yourself a favor. Go ahead and give him a follow right about now. Kobe, thanks so much, man, for coming on. I know we kind of went over on the time, but you know how it is when we get to talking basketball, man. There's no stopping us. Definitely. Anytime. Thanks for having me. I I love coming on the show, man. Absolutely. No doubt. That's my dude, Kobe Dent, right there. And of course, we're always appreciative that he stopped through and joined us and educated us a little bit. And we always kind of going back and forth. I tell people all the time, I don't really talk that much, even about basketball. I don't like really, really talk that much. But, you know, I, I, it's a lot of people that's in disagreement with that. But that's OK, too. Make sure that you go and follow along on all social media platforms at Tate's Take Hoops, T-A-T-E-S-T-A-K-E-H-O-O-P-S, hashtag, we like to call it, where basketball lives. Going to have more interviews that are going to be coming up, more and more episodes, episode number 100 coming up really soon. So this is going to conclude number 97, but you can go and catch this podcast anywhere. So there is no excuses. Oh, man, I missed a podcast. Or don't just get caught scrolling through. Oh, Deshaun's live. Let me see what he's talking about. No, do yourself a favor. Go and subscribe. We're everywhere. Uh, go and check us out iTunes, Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. 
Uh, shows also posted to, uh, and I appreciate my girl Stephanie Starworth. We got a plug with Roku and uh, Apple TV as well as uh, Fire TV. Find the show under that sports section of The Flow TV, the F-L-O-W Flow Television. Make sure that you go and check The Flow Television. Give a follow for all, you know, a great channel um, that you can go and be able to find the podcast. So if you're, you know, the person with the Roku and this and that, I know all the cool kids are doing different things. That's one of the ways also on Spreaker. You can also find Tate's Take on Spreaker as well. So tell your mama, tell your grandmama, tell your baby mama where to find the best, the most entertaining, the most informational, and of course, the most educational basketball content on the planet in the form of a podcast, concluding and signing off for number 97. See you guys in the next one. Peace.